from Marlow from Wild Fuji K up foraging again. It's the 15th of September and I'm in a graveyard in Herefordshire. Uh, we are close to a road so there might be a bit of background noise but don't worry because the mushroom I'm about to show you is really interesting. Come on down and have a look. Here we go. This, um, this is the first specimen that we saw whilst walking around in the grass and you could be forgiven for uh, thinking that it's uh, the cap of a young russula. There are plenty of russulas with this kind of colouring. But if you're picking your russulas, this is one that you certainly need to know about. This is a mushroom that's world famous. And I'll just get into the ground here to show you how, with mushrooms, if you don't know what they are, some of the key identifying features are at the very base of the mushroom. And to, to get that out, the technique that we use is to put a knife in about an inch away from the mushroom and lever it up out of the ground. That's what we did and this is what we saw. Now you can see there's an egg sac and the volval remains stretching up onto the greeny yellow cap which is actually white at the margin there. We've got this white stem and under the cap you've got the veil which will turn into as the cap comes away from the mushroom, which will turn into the skirt, which ends up left attached to the mushroom as you see there. Now I've exposed the gills, which are white. This whole family, the Amanita family, have white gills. Most of them grow from an egg sac, and most of them, apart from the grisettes, have a skirt when mature, although the skirt can brush off. Uh, also, most of them have speckles or the remnants of the veil, the volval remains rather, attached to the cap. Now with this particular species, it stays kind of like sheets of tissue paper on the cap of the mushroom. And that, those features, tell me that what I have here is the Amanita phalloides. So let's go over here. And this is what we saw next. The Amanita phalloides is more commonly known as the death cap mushroom. So there's a mature one just over here, Charlie. And you can see the skirt, the remains of the skirt on the stem. Again, those white gills. This one was taken out by the mower, so we've not got the, the remains of the egg sac around the base, but you've got this again greeny and slightly yellowing cap. Now this one here, the first one I showed you, is quite unusual. You can see the colouring is quite different to this one here. This is the normal colour I associate with the death cap mushroom but there is also a white variant and this one here seems to almost be a mixture between the two. Whether as he'd matured, the cap would have ended up whiter or darker, I'm not sure. But we've got some other youngsters just over here, which are showing their normal coloring. And there's that volval remains, like sheets of tissue paper on the cap there. Now, if I get this big fella out the ground, see all of those features again. A massive egg sac here, the skirt as you can see and the white gills. Now for novice foragers if you've got any combination of those features we just advise that you take extreme care. There are a few uh, edible varieties in the Amanita family. The blusher is lovely and the uh, orange grisette is one that I particularly like. Um, but in the family there are some of the most poisonous mushrooms in the world. This is one of them, the death cat. There's also the destroying angel. Both of those mushrooms contain amatoxins which are seriously poisonous. They will end up basically almost digesting your liver. Uh, and you will die of liver failure and other organ failure eventually. Most of the time when you've eaten more than half of a death cat, unless you have treatment. There are ways that they can treat you if you get to hospital. Uh, if they get you early enough, they might actually give you milk thistle to help protect your liver. But then uh, someone 
uh, got in touch with us just recently saying that their child had eaten uh, a portion of a death cat mushroom and they also used antibiotics and the child recovered fully. But without treatment, I think it's something like half of the people that have eaten death caps have died. Uh, globally, I think they're the biggest killer in the mushroom world. Um, this and the, the Amanita verosa, the destroying angel, which I think was responsible for, for the last death in Britain from mushroom poisoning back in 2014 um, depending on when you're watching this video that is uh, so these are seriously dangerous mushrooms uh, some people uh, get poisoned by this mushroom because it looks a lot like edible mushrooms in other countries so in the Far East and Australia I think as well they have something called the paddy straw mushroom which is a good edible and looks quite a lot like this so maybe foragers from there would come over and uh, find these and make that mistake. It also looks a little bit like the very famous Caesar's mushroom which is a delicacy all over Europe and one that I haven't actually managed to taste yet. I'm looking forward to the day I get to do that um, but it looks quite similar to this so I suppose people in Europe foraging for the Caesar's mushroom which is a bit more yellowy might mistake a death cat for that mushroom um, but the poison uh, from uh, the Amanita family or these particular members of the Amanita family is like I said very serious they're called amatoxins and uh, they don't kill you quickly either you will initially from the poisoning from a death cat get gastric upset that will be very unpleasant and then uh, a lot of people actually recover from the gastric upset and it's written in some of my older books that people have been sent home from hospital only to die a few days later from organ failure because of the amatoxins that are working on their liver in that time. So seriously toxic mushroom. I suppose one last thing to show you is that I am not afraid to touch this mushroom. I am not afraid to lick my finger after touching this mushroom. It's not dangerous to do those things, although I would not recommend having a nibble. Um, but it's not dangerous to you unless you do ingest some of the mushroom. This rather scruffy looking one is the most mature specimen we've got here to show you. Um, but they do from here open up, I suppose this one's actually a little bit more mature even though it was going to be smaller. Uh, they open up to a flat cap like most mushrooms will do and uh, this one would have got to possibly 10 centimetres in height and maybe 8 to 10 centimetres in the diameter of the cap so they're quite a sizeable mushroom. They grow in mixed woodland, particularly with oak. We're underneath an oak tree at the moment, but you can find them in lots of different types of uh, woodland. Normally, uh, from my own experience, grassy woodland. So you find them in amongst oaks in grassland. Um, but yeah, apparently they aren't too fussy about the trees that they, they will grow with. So you can find them in a lot of different places. There we go, the death cap and potentially even one that would whiten as well. So the green and the slightly lighter variety, all from the same underground organism. I would expect a mushroom that all foragers need to know. So I'm glad I've been able to show it to you today. If you want to find out more, go to www.wildfooduk.com.